Hi, let's do more practice. In this video, we'll cover question 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27, and lastly, 29. So pause the video, do your questions, and we'll go through the answers. 2,000 years later. All right, most of the questions are quite standardized and you can follow a set step to do uh, all these kind of questions. No matter what kind of scenario, what kind of physics formula they are given to you, you can just follow the steps. So uh, let's say the first one uh, is asking you about the uncertainty uh, in each case for the sum and differences. So uh, what you have to do each time is to find the average value first by substituting the average value of the raw data in. So simply add them together, you find the answer, and then you find uncertainty. So in this case, you have to classify in whether plus or minus or multiply or division. So here is plus or minus. So that's why you do it this way. Just add the uncertainty five and three together become eight. And lastly, uh, express the answer in terms of uh, the S whole value itself. So it's the average value plus or minus, I miss out the minus, minus eight bracket Newton. So remember the bracket and the unit here. For the second part, it's more or less the same. You also find the average first and find the absolute uncertainty. Remember for minus, you also add the uncertainty together. So at the end, this will be the answer. For the next question, all right, it's also very uh, straightforward so uh, it took me quite some time to write more than thinking so for part a uh, because the equation itself is a fraction so again find the average first but for the absolute uncertainty you have to use the this format because it is uh, divide division so each of them will contribute the percentage error substitute in and you'll find 0 0.3 and that will simply be the answer because uh, this is in one sec fig and the uh, the uh, decimal place will match, so nothing would need to be changed. For part B, it is obviously an addition question, um, and so you have the average value find first, and for the uncertainty, even though you may say, you may see, hey, there is a multiplication, but then that multiplication is with a constant, so you can take 2a as a plus a plus b plus b plus b, right? So you don't actually have to involve any multiplication here. So at the end, uh, you also just have to add them up together, and the uncertainty is 13. So I could express it as 85 plus or minus 13, but the better way to express it is to express it in scientific notation, remember? Uh, because you want to show this significant figure to your audience. So I will express it as 8.5 plus or minus 1.3 times 10 to the power of 1. For part C, uh, it is uh, similar to part B, so I think I'm not going to um, repeat it again. Again, the main thing you have to pay attention is minus. Uh, you still have to add the absolute uncertainty together, so not minus. I mean, if you do minus, it's obviously strange as well. If you do 1 minus 2, that becomes negative 1. You cannot have absolute uncertainty to be uh, negative. I mean, it's strange, I mean, because it's plus or minus anyway, so uh, we usually express it as a positive value. Part D, uh, it is A squared, and that means A times A. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you know how to do it, and uh, here's the answer. The only thing, though, is that, once again, the average value is 100, and uncertainty is 6, so you may express it as 100 plus or minus 6, but again, the better way of doing it would be uh, 1 I think I would say 1.00, sorry, here, yeah, 1.00 plus or minus 0 0.06, so then the decimal place will match together, and also you can express the significant figure uh, to it. Um, I can take it as 100, and this 100 is actually have free sig fig because it was 10.0, so 10.0 has free sig fig, so that's why uh, 100 here actually has free sig fig as well. Part E. Part E is uh, somewhat on built on top of part D. Uh, you have to divide B square as well. So uh, nothing changed. Again, uh, you just have to apply the formula like what we mentioned in previous videos. And you find the average value to be 25, absolute uncertainty to be 7.5. And here, you have to notice that uh, the decimal place does not match, all right, if you just keep it this way. So what you have to do uh, is since 
for absolute uncertainty, we'll have to usually keep it as one sig fig because here is 7.5, right? The only case that we can keep it as two most of the time is uh, when your first significant figure for the absolute value is one. So for example, like part B is 1.3. So the first letter is actually one, then you can uh, get to keep one more. So two sig fig in this case. However, uh, in other cases, you probably should just keep one sec fake. So that is uh, eight here, and eight will match the decimal place with 25, so we are all good with this. Okay, next question is a good example to show you that you don't have to truly understand the, uh, the equations behind, you can still estimate its absolute uncertainty. So this one, sagittal force is something that you will learn in chapter six probably uh, about circular motion. So what you have to do once again is to simply substitute the values in V, M and R into the average value and you can find 68.6 and you have to follow the uncertainty rule that is here we got multiplication and division so for V because it's square you have to times 2 over here other than that is nothing special just substitute in uh, you, I will still keep it at 68.6 .6 here not to run up for anything and then you find out the absolute uncertainty to be 23.765. Again, you only get to keep this with one sec fig only. And therefore, I would say it, it would be 20. And since this is 20, in, in theory is 20. So in your mind, you can remember that is 20. And here, since you have to match with the significant figure, that decimal place. So that would be 70 for this one. So the answer is actually 70 plus or minus 20 for the final answer. And I, what I did here is I express it in scientific notation. So this can tell people that I only got one sec fig for each number. All right, for the next two questions, I start to get bored and I feel it's kind of repetitive. I guess you may feel the same as well. So uh, I guess if you are in my class, then it's okay. I'm happy that if you skip 26, and 27 and you can also see that I'm, I'm just being too lazy right now because it's really the, nothing much to explain it's really the same as uh, what we did earlier and so uh, you can just read uh, what I display here and once again the most important thing is how you can decide the final answer to be displayed so here we got 18 point something plus or minus 2 so those decimal places you cannot keep them and also pay attention to the unit expression, uh, not to forget to put down unit with the bracket so you can just write the unit once. Otherwise, you have to write 18 cm cube plus or minus 2 cm cube. Both are fine, but of course, with the bracket, it's just nicer and easier. Same for 27, uh, it is about finding area, which is multiplication. Perimeter is uh, simply addition question, so we just follow the rule that we talk about. And for the final expression, so once again here you can see that uh, we will express with one sec fig, and therefore it match with uh, the three that that digit decimal place, and so that's why it's thirty seven only. Same for the perimeter. Very simple. Last question here. When I look at this question, I recall there was a similar example question that we did earlier and I emphasize uh, you have to pay attention to whether it is being measured or being calculated and in this question uh, they given they have given you the uncertainty of radius and height which is four percent and they want to find out the one that is for volume uh, however they did not specify which one is being measured and which one is being calculated so I assume right here what I'm trying to show here is I assume radius and height are being measured so those are raw data and volume is the process data they are it is being calculated so if this is the case then I think everything else is very simple then we just have to say V delta V over V log would equal to according to the equation that will be 2 delta R over R log and H we have got one and then three we can just ignore and pi we can just ignore so in this case then the percentage error in fact in case uh you if you are wondering the percentage uncertainty you can write this way percentage delta v means percentage uncertainty of volume that will be uh four percent from the radius and four percent from the heights 
So that means all together will be 12%. All right, I think this is a very straightforward way to express.